So, today we will discuss the criteria for convergent and diverging sequences. We have already seen that if x n be a sequence of real numbers, then it is said to be a monotone if there is a sequence of the positive integer in increasing order or decreasing order such that the corresponding terms of the sequence x n 1 x 2 x n n uh, then they form the monotonic sequence x n 1 is less than x n 2 less than x n 3 and monotonic increasing or if it is a reverse then we say monotonic decreasing. And also if a monotonic sequence which is bounded above or below it must be a convergent sequence. So, based on this we have seen that sequences if you are monotone and bounded we can say that sequence will definitely converge. But every sequence need not be a monotone sequence because there are all the sequence which are not at all monotone sequence. Then how to find out whether the sequence is convergent or diverging. So, for this we have a certain results which will directly tell without computing the limit whether the sequence is convergent or not. And one of them which is very important result is given by the Cauchy which is known as the Cauchy convergence criteria for a sequence of real or complex numbers. Okay. <coughs> so, let us see the first thing eh, that if a sequence is convergent then all of its subsequences will also converge to the limit. We know if a sequence is convergent then the limit is unique this we know that as limit of a convergent sequence we know a limit of a convergent sequence is unique. That is if there are two limits if suppose if x dash and x be the two limits of a convergent sequence x n of real numbers then x dash must be equal to x. The reason is if we start with x dash minus x then this can be written as x dash minus x n plus x n minus x. Now, since x n converges to x dash it is a limit. So, by definition of the limit the for a given epsilon greater than 0 for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists an integer positive integer capital N 1 such that mod of x n minus x dash is less than epsilon by 2 say for all n greater than equal to n 1. Similarly, for the same epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer say n 2 such that mod of x n minus x remains less than epsilon y 2 for all n greater than equal to n 2. So, if we choose capital N to be the maximum of n 1 and n 2 then this result is also true for n greater than capital N this is also true for n greater than n capital N. Therefore, this thing can be made less than uh, this thing can be made less than epsilon y 2 plus epsilon y 2 for n greater than n. So, this shows that x dash must be equal to x that is a limit of the convergent sequence is always unique. So, it means if a sequence which has a different limits it cannot be a convergent sequence. So, this is the one of the uh, criteria you can say that if a given sequence is there find out the limits if along various path it has a different limits then the sequence will not be a convergent sequence then we call it this such a sequence of course, a diverging sequence which you are not. The another thing is if a sequence is a convergent sequence then all of its subsequences will also have the same limit. So, that is very interesting result which is not true in case of the divergent sequence. 
divergent sequence the subsequences have different limits okay so if a sequence if a sequence x which is say xn of real numbers of real numbers converges to converges to a real number a real number say x x then any subsequence any subsequence x dash which is a x n k of x also converges to x. So, if x n is a convergence sequence of real number then all of its subsequences will also converge to x. Subsequences we mean uh, we have discussed there that if x n is a convergence x n is any sequence and if we identify this uh, integers n 1 n 2 n n such that which are increasing or decreasing order then this sequence x n k means increasing order n 1 is less than into n 3 then this sequence will be a subsequence. So, this will now let us see proof proof is very simple what is given is the sequence is a convergence sequence. So, it is given given the sequence x n which is denoted by say x is a convergent sequence. So, for the given epsilon by definition, so by definition for given for given any epsilon r greater than 0 a positive number there will exist there exist a an in positive integer say capital N which depends on say epsilon r such that such that mod of x n minus x is less than say epsilon r for all n greater than equal to n depends on epsilon r. Okay? This is what we get. <laughs> now, we are wanted thus any sequence subsequence must converge. So, let us pick up the terms take n 1 less than n 2 less than n 3 less than n k and like this. This is the sequence of increasing sequence of natural number increasing sequence of positive integers positive integers ok n 1 is less than n 2 n less than n 3 positive integer. Now, obviously clearly this n k will be greater than k for any because k is 1 then you can identify n 1 which is greater than 1 then k is 2 you can identify another integer positive n 2 such that n 1 is less than n 2 which is greater than 2 and like this. So, it is very easy to verify that this is follows. Okay. Now, if this k is greater than this number here capital K n if this number is capital N. So, what we do hence if if this k which we have taken is greater than or equal to capital N which depends on epsilon L. then obviously n k will also greater than k. So, for all n k uh, greater so n k will also be greater than k which is greater than or equal to n depends on epsilon L. therefore for this these n k's this result is true. So, from so we get mod of x n k minus x is less than epsilon L for all n k 
for all k belongs to the natural number n for all k belongs to n this is true but n 1 n 2 n satisfy this conditions also which we have therefore the sequence subsequence x n k will converge to x so this implies that the subsequence x n k this subsequence will converge to x and this is an arbitrary uh, uh, sequence we are choosing. So, any subsequence of x will definitely converge. So, if a sequence x n is a convergent sequence then all of its subsequences will converge. So, this is one. Now, let us suppose we have a converse part of it the criteria where the converge the limit fails then it will lead to a sequence which is a diverging sequence ok. So, let us find out what will be the corresponding or equivalent condition when the sequence does not converge ok. So, let us see the criteria or uh, the divergence of this uh, if the sequence if sequence x n or limit of x n when n tends to infinity does not converge to x does not converge to x or the limit fails then what will be the then we have then we have the following equivalent criteria then we have this theorem will help you in identifying the diverging sequence the criteria for di diverging sequence. So, let x which is x n be a sequence of real number real numbers then the following conditions then the following conditions are equivalent. The first condition is the sequence x which is denoted by x n x x n does not converse to converse to x in real means does not converse to a number x. The second criteria is there exist n there exist and positive epsilon epsilon not greater than 0 such that for any k belongs to n n is the natural number this is the set of natural number n for any k belongs to n there exist n k a positive integer belonging to n such that such that n k is greater than equal to k and mod of x n k minus x is greater than equal to epsilon naught and third condition is <laughs> there exist an epsilon naught greater than 0 and a subsequence and a subsequence x dash say x of x and k of x of x such that x and k minus x is greater than equal to epsilon naught for 
all k belongs to n. Okay. So, what this shows is proof we will see x n is a sequence of real number then the following conditions are equivalent the sequence x n does not converge to x then it is equivalent to this equivalent to this. Basically, the, the difference between second and third is second says that n k h which does not follow the increasing order may or may not follow the increasing order that just there exists some n k where this is true, but here there must be a sequence n 1 n 2 n n which should be a decreasing order n 1 less than n 2 less than n 3 and corresponding to this positive integer a sequence x n k can be obtained. So, that it satisfy this condition. Now, what is this condition? When we say the limit of this x n is x naught or is x it means if I draw a neighborhood around the point f this with a suitable radius say epsilon not with a suitable radius epsilon not then the all the terms of the sequence must fall within this if the limit exists but if the limit does not exist it means the all the terms of the sequence after certain stage will fall somewhere outside of this neighborhood because this also shows that if x is uh, if you draw a neighborhood around the point x with a radius epsilon not then all the terms of the sequence after this integer say n 1 is a, a, n 1 x n 2 etcetera this will not satisfy this will not fall within this region it will fall outside of it. So, this shows the criteria for the this shows the sequence uh, x n does not have a limit. Okay. So, we will go to the proof uh, that how these three conditions are equivalent means we can if the sequence does not converge we can immediately say this condition holds that is there exists f, f sin or not and a subsequence such that the f x n most of the terms or infinite many terms lies outside of the f sin neighborhood f sin not neighborhood of x. Okay. Let us see the proof. Proof of this. Okay. So, first is very uh, first implies 2 1 implies 2 let us see what is the first sequence does not converge then we have to find out this thing. Okay. So, if the sequence does not converge given the sequence x n does not converge does not converge to x it means what it means uh, for the convergence for any epsilon or greater than 0 there will be an n such a k such that all n greater than a difference in length, but if it does not converge. So, we can identify a epsilon or not and corresponding to the epsilon or not we can identify the sequence where it violates the condition of the never that. So, then for some epsilon or not greater than 0 for some epsilon or not greater than 0 it is impossible it is impossible to find a natural number find a positive integer or find a positive integer say k such that for all n belongs to a natural number capital N this is a set of natural numbers set of natural number belongs to capital N such that for all k uh, k such that for all n greater than k the term the term x n satisfy the condition satisfy mod of x n minus x is less than epsilon or not. So, what he says is if support does not converge it means for at least for some epsilon or not it is impossible to find an integer k such that when you choose all n 
for all n greater than equal to k. This condition will not satisfy it. It is impossible to satisfy this condition. That is to say that is this means that for each k belongs to for each k belongs to n it is not true that for all n for all n greater than equal to k for all n greater than equal to k the inequality inequality mod x n minus x less than epsilon are not hold for this holds that is the same thing for each k it is not what do you mean it means we can identify a sequence we can identify a natural number n k such that which n k is greater than k and this condition violates that is in other words in other words we can say that for each k belongs to capital N, there exists a natural number, a natural number or positive integer you can say n k, which is greater than or equal to k such that mod of x n k minus x is greater than or equal to epsilon or not. That is what you because if does not converge means this condition will satisfy because it is impossible to find out n k which will follow this condition. So, there must be a n k some integer can be obtained which will violate this condition. So, that is what you get. So, 1 implies 2. Now, 2 implies 3. <laughs> it follows immediately second condition said that there exist an epsilon or not such that for any k there exist n k such that n k is greater than equal to k. Now, you can find out n 1 which is greater than 1 and satisfying this condition then n 2 which is greater than n 1 and greater than this will satisfy. So, using this uh, uh, given Okay. Then let n 1 is a integer is a natural number be such that n 1 is greater than equal to 1 and it violates it satisfy this x n 1 minus x is greater than equal to epsilon not, not. Then you choose n 2 which is greater than n 1 and again is satisfy this condition is greater than equal to epsilon. So, continue this way. So, continue once you continue you will get a sequence n k. So, continue this continue this way we can find a sequence n k of positive integers. of positive integer such that such that x n k minus x naught is greater than equal to epsilon naught for all k belongs to n. We are what is n k? We are this condition is satisfied. We are n k is greater than n k minus 1 and so on is greater than n 1 which is greater than equal to k 1 okay, like this. So, we can identify this sequence clear and this shows what this shows that the condition third is valid equivalent. Okay. So, third now third implies first given this condition holds that is there exist an in epsilon or not and a subsequence x days n. So, uh, and a subsequence uh, x day. So, we can say subsequence x 
should I write this way? Yeah, uh, this was the third condition. There exists x y not and a subsequence x dash n such that this condition holds. So here, this is given. We want the x n does not converge. Okay. So suppose the sequence x here you can say in this the subsequence uh, uh, we can say that there exists a we obtain we get a subsequence x dash which is x n k x n k of x such that this condition violates that is all. Okay. So, this condition is suppose sequence x n converges, suppose the sequence x which is x n has a subsequence has a subsequence x dash n x n k satisfies which satisfies which satisfy condition 3. Okay. So, once it is uh, there then we have to show required to show is required to prove the sequence x which is x n does not converge. This we wanted to show. Suppose it is not true. Suppose the sequence x which is x n converges. Okay. Suppose it converges. Now, x days since x days which is x n k is a subsequence is a subsequence of x and this sequence we have assumed to be convergent. So, all of its subsequence must be convergent okay, by the just previous row. So, this shows this implies the sequence x and k this sequence must converge to x must converge to x or converges to x. It means that that is mod of x and k minus x is less than equal to f sin l for all n or for all k belongs to n. If it is convergent or for all n you just say x n minus a for all n greater than equal to capital K belongs to ok. But that will violate this condition because the condition said x n k minus x naught is greater than f sin l not. So, for this particular f sin l equal to f sin l not, but for f sin l equal to f sin l not b get x n minus x is not equal to less than f sin l naught. It is greater than or equal to f sin l naught. So, this is get violates that condition. Therefore, uh, this is a contradiction of our given condition 3. So, contradicts condition 3 because if it is suppose assumed convergent then it must satisfy uh, this condition that x minus x and k for all k belongs to n this must satisfy condition. But for this particular f sin l not this condition is violated because this is uh, this condition is not satisfied because it is greater than f sin l. Therefore, uh, contradicts the condition 3 and contradiction is because of a wrong assumption sequence converges. Therefore, this implies the sequence x which is x n does not converge and that proves the result. Okay. Clear? So, these are the, now there are some criteria for the divergence. So, this we call it as a divergence criteria, divergence criteria if a sequence if a 
sequence x say x n of real numbers of real numbers has either of the following of the following has either of the following properties then x is divergent divergent what is the first is x has two convergent two convergent subsequences two convergent subsequences x dash which is say x and k and x double dash say x r k x r k whose limits are not equal and second one is x is unbounded ok. The proof will be very simple if a sequence x n of real number has either of the following property then x is diverging. So, what is this property first property says if the sequence x has a two convergent subsequences whose limits are not equal then the sequence will be considered as a diverging sequence or second one is if x is unbounded that is the limit of x n will go to either plus infinity or minus infinity then also sequence is considered to be a diverging sequence. The proof follows immediately from the fact that if suppose x is a convergent sequence then in case of the convergent sequence any subsequence of the convergent sequence must be convergent and converge to the same limit because the limit is unique. So, if x any sequence have a different uh, limit along the different subsequences different path then the sequence cannot be a convergent one. So, it has to be divergent. Similarly, every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence. So, if a sequence is unbounded it cannot be convergent. So, proof first is follows since since all subsequences of a convergent sequence of convergent sequence x equal to x n say all subsequence of convergent sequence must converge to the same limit. This is the criteria for the convergence is it not that is what we have proved also this is proved earlier proved it. So, if a sequence has its subsequence if it does not converge then obviously, it will be diverging. So, first criteria first condition shows first condition shows that the sequence x n is diverging divergent. Second follows since uh, a convergent sequence is bounded is always bounded sequence. So, if a sequence is unbounded then it must be a con uh, it must not be a convergent it will not be a convergent sequence. Now, here we are not saying uh, a boundedness because even a diverging sequence may be a bounded sequence. So, we are not saying what we are saying is a convergent sequence will always be bounded sequence. So, once it is unbounded or definitely that sequence will be a diverging sequence. So, that proof follows you ok. So, this criteria. Uh, I think we have given already examples taken. For example, if we take a sequence x n which is minus 1 to the power n, this is sequence, then this has a two limit 1 and minus 1 when n is 
even and when is odd. So, it is a diverging sequence and second if I take the sequence x n to be say like this 1 half 3 1 by 4 and so on. So, this sequence when there is odd numbers it will go to infinity when n is odd and when n is even then it will go to 0 because half 1 by 4 1 by 8 uh, 6 1 by 8 and so on. So, when n is even. So, it has the two limits ok therefore, it will not be a converging okay. diverging yes. <coughs> Now, we have for the monotonic sequences we have a criteria that every bounded monotone sequence is convergent and that is called the uh, sequence uh, monotonic convergence uh, bounded sequence of uh, monotonic sequence are always convergent. And based on this we have a monotone subsequence theorem that theorem says that if x n is a real number then there is a subsequence of x that is monotone. Uh, in fact, uh, if a sequence is given then it is not necessary that sequence be a, uh, be a monotone sequence, but always we can identify at least a subsequence which has a mono which will be a monotone. So, every sequence of the real number have a monotone subsequence. So, that we know that every sequence every sequence uh, every sequence of real number of real numbers will have a subsequence will have a subsequence that is monotone. either monotone increasing, monotone decreasing and so on. So, once it is monotone and if it is bounded then that particular sequence will be monotone sequence will be convergent, but it does not mean that sequence x n will be convergent because the sequence x n does not have all the subsequences which are monotone. So, you cannot say the sequence itself is a convergent one. Okay only one particular subsequence which comes out to be a monotone sequence and if it is bounded sequence it will converge if it is unbounded it will diverge like that. So, again the criteria for the monotone will not help you much unless the sequence is monotone we are unable to identify whether the sequence is convergent or not. And there is one result which also we have seen the bolzano restas bolzano restas theorem this theorem we have shown a bounded sequence of real number sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence so both these result that is monotonic subsequence theorem this is the monotone subsequence theorem and bolzano restas theorem though it gives a rough idea about this sum of the subsequences, but it does not give the total idea about the entire sequence. So, we are unable to get this uh, whether the sequence is convergent, but the Cauchy has given this idea which is known as the Cauchy convergence criteria which without calculating the limit of the sequence which can tell whether sequence is convergent or not. So, for this we will develop first few results and then go. let x be a sequence of real number real numbers 
and let x dash be a subsequence. X dash is a uh, and let x dash is a uh, subsequence be a subsequence of x. Now, if we consider x dash as independent sequence, then basically it is also a sequence. So, again we can identify a subsequence of x dash again. So, we can get let x double dash, but x double dash is itself a sequence. So, we can identify that. So, let x double dash be a subsequence of x dash. Then obviously, the element of x double dash are also element of x. So, obviously, x double dash will also be will also be a subsequence of x. Is it okay? So, this end continue like this till we get this. Okay? Now, we have a very interesting result. The result is theorem. The theorem says let x which is x n be a bounded sequence of real number. sequence of real numbers boundary sequence of real numbers and let x and x is a belongs to r and let x belongs to r have the property that every convergence of sequence convergent subsequence every convergence subsequence of x converges every subsequence converges to x and let x belongs to have the property that every convergence subsequence of x converges to x then the sequence x then the sequence capital X converges which is X n converges to X. Now, this is the converse part of the previous results. In the previous re, uh, result we have shown that every if a sequence is convergent then all of its subsequences will be convergent and converge to the same limit. Now, this shows the converse part. Suppose a sequence is bounded sequence and if all of its subsequences converges to the same point x, then the sequence must be a convergent one. So, proof is now given that x n is a bounded sequence, given the sequence x n is bounded. So, it means all the terms of the sequence are dominated or less than equal to some number. So, there exist an m greater than 0 such that all the terms of the sequence is less than equal to m for all n for all n belongs to m because it is a bounded. Now, we wanted the x n is convergent. So, suppose this sequence x n is not convergent. is not convergent to x is not convergent to x is not uh, not convergent and to the x point convergent and converges to x and not convergent to x okay then what do we once the sequence is not convergent uh, does not converge to x so we will apply the criteria which we have discussed for the diverging sequence then by the criteria we can say so there exists so, there exist there exist an epsilon naught greater than 0 and a subsequence a 
and a subsequence x dash which is x and k of x such that such that x and k minus x is greater than or equal to epsilon naught for all k belongs to a set of natural number n belongs to n is it on? so let it be one now x dash is a subsequence an element of x dash is also the element of x and x is given to be bounded so the element of the subsequence is also bounded so since the x dash is a subsequence of x which is bounded given so all the terms of the sequence x and dash is also less than or equal to m for all k belongs to m this criteria will help now this subsequence is a bounded sequence so x dash itself is a sequence now this sequence is a bounded sequence once it is a bounded sequence then by bolzano restas theorem a bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence convergent subsequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay. So, by Bolzano Resta Solom, this uh, convergent subsequence. So, by Bolzano Resta Solom, Bolzano Vesta Solom, we can say that X dash has a convergent, has a convergent. Convergent subsequence x double dash, x double dash, say x r k. Convergent subsequence x double dash, okay. Okay, but this x double dash is also a subset uh, uh, elements of this all the elements of x. But x double dash is also a subsequence of x and this sequence has a subsequence which is convergent is it not. So, this subsequence uh, converges therefore, what we get. So, by this uh, so this implies that for a given epsilon not greater than 0 there exists an integer capital uh, say k depends on epsilon naught such that mod of x r k minus x is less than epsilon naught is it not, but for all k belongs to capital N let it be 2. Now, first and 2 are contradictory this first is x and k minus x k is greater than epsilon naught for n. Now, this n k covers r k because r k is one of the n k's so, because this r this x r k is a subsequence of x n k. So, these are the points belongs to x days. So, they are also satisfy the condition 1, but this con they also satis they are also satisfying 2. So, a contradiction to 1. So, a contra but so a contradiction contradiction to proves that. So, why it is contradiction? Because our assumption is wrong that x n is not convergent. Prove that sequence x n is convergent, x n converges to x. This is what we have. Okay? So, this proof. Now, let us come to Cauchy convergence criteria. Okay. Criteria. Now, this Cauchy convergence criteria tells this is this tells about the convergence 
of a sequence xn of real or complex numbers without computing their limit. Their limit limits because what happens is if the sequence x n is given, then one can easily identify uh, by taking the limit. If I consider the limit of the sequence, and if the limit comes out to a finite quantity, limit exists, comes out to a finite quantity, then we say the sequence is convergent. But if the limit goes to infinity or does not exist means along different subsequence different limits then we say the sequence diverges. But what the Cauchy converge criteria says that you need not to compute the limits of a sequence x n just simply apply that criteria which is given by Cauchy one can identify whether the given sequence is a convergent one or diverging or diverging one. Okay. So, that is a very ex ex advantage of this Cauchy converge criteria because the previous criteria which we have seen whether it is a monotonic <coughs> convergence theorem or may be a Bolzano Restas theorem all these theorem depends on certain particular cases say monotone convergence unless it is sequence is monotone and bounded you cannot say it is a convergence sequence. Okay. Bolzano Restas theorem a bounded sequence has a convergence subsequence but does not say about the sequence itself whether the sequence is convergent or not. So, this Cauchy convergence criteria is very interesting and important and it directly relates to the convergence part of the sequence. <coughs> so, we will go in detail next class for this. Okay. Thank you very much.